Today we're going to be talking about mixing it up for hiring velocity, and, and that's kind of a vague title, but what I want to talk to you about really is experimenting, and we're going to get more into that. Um, but how many of you yesterday heard Colin O'Brien's um, conversation? Wasn't that powerful? It, it was so powerful, and I hope that I can keep that mindset as I'm trying new things to just take that one step forward. You know, when things get tough or I think that I'm not going to be able to accomplish something, just taking that one step. And what I'd ask is that you keep that one step in mind as we go through this conversation because what I'm going to ask you to do is something outside of your comfort zone. So to push yourself a little bit and take that one step. But before I get into that, I want to go over a brief history because unless we know where we came from, we're never going to know where we're headed. And so let's talk a little bit about recruiting and, and where it's come from and how we got to where we are today. How many of you use hiring assessments in, in your interview process? A few of you? And how many of those feel that that's a really effective way to assess cultural fit for a candidate? None of you? Okay, well we've been doing it for about a hundred years now. You would think we've gotten really good at it. But the thing is, I, I look at these questions and a couple of them I still see today on some of the assessment tests. You know, it, it, it's not what works to determine whether a candidate's going to be the right fit for an organization. And before we even get to these assessment tests, one of the things we do are the interview questions, right? And some people like creating these really crazy interview questions that they feel is going to just peel the onion of the candidate. And if you ask a really creative question or, or the deep question, you're going to uncover who that candidate is and what they'll bring to the organization. And so I want to share with you a scene from one of my favorite um, interview questions. This is how people do it now, Nikki. They have their interviews on the internet. I like it. I know child. Okay, here they are. And when I hit this, yeah, they'll be able to straight. see us. So come on and get in here close so we can be seen in the webcam. See how small the webcam is? No, get you the cheek. Nick, come here. But don't crown me. We can see you guys. Okay, good. Great. You got it. Hi, my name is Billy. Oh, we can hear you fine as well. Oh, great. Good. Uh, Billy McMahon. Nick Campbell. I'm Benjamin. Allison. We're going to ask you a few questions that some of our candidates find a little bit odd. Let's go. No here. judgment. Shoot. You're shrunken down to the size of nickels and dropped to the bottom of a blender. What do you do? You take her flat on your right, back right, like right. this. You just lay back, enjoy lay that breeze, a pretend feather, it's a fan. And let the, let the, okay, the glass blades wrap all around Good. you like this. It's like getting an MRI. Once this blender's on, it's on forever. It's on. Respectfully, I got to disagree. We sold blenders, and even the best model in the world is only going to run maybe 10 or 11 hours. So we're getting out, and when we do, we're better off for it, because whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. It's not so much getting out of the blender. It's what happens next. That's the question. You've got two nickel-sized men free in the world. Think of the possibilities. I mean, I, I, I'm top of my head and I'm just spitballing here. swimming. Sunglass repair? We'd yeah, be hell yeah, on those little screws. Little. Maybe stick us in those submarines that they put in people's bodies to fight diseases. Okay, yeah. you, that's, that's not a real thing, the submarines. No. Wait a minute. I thought we were stuck in a blender. Now we're saving lives? What? Uh, what? 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 Let me just recap this for you real quick. We started off in a blender. Yeah. Now we're saving lives. What? 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 Wait a minute. We were stuck in a blender a and now we're saving lives? What? You guys led us to this. Thank you. Whoop. What? <laughs> but interesting enough, Google is not the first company to come up with the odd question. In fact, it was Thomas Edison who created the first structured job interview. And what he did was he had 150 questions tailored to the role that he was hiring. And candidates that would pass this interview process would be hired to the role. And, and you can see these are really, really important questions, right? A, a carpenter coming to his, his um, company and wanting to work for Edison really needed to know where we get prunes from, right? Um, interview questions don't always uncover what we're looking for in the candidate. Recruiting emerged around 1940. So during the World War, when people went off to war, it left 
great gaps in, in the employment um, within the United States. And so recruitment agencies started springing up to fill those gaps. And when individuals came back from the war with these additional skill sets, the recruitment agencies then placed them into some of these companies. And that's where it grew from. But in order for the recruitment agencies to have a way to present their candidate, they needed to create the resume. And the resume started in like 1400. Leonardo da Vinci was the first person to create a resume. And as a Jerome says, resumes will be going away. But today, this is what we use to assess a candidate's fit in bringing them into the company in order to begin that interview process. So we've been doing all of this for a long time now, right? We've been doing assessments, interviews, utilizing resumes. And now we've got some disruption. So in 2003, social media really came on the, the scene as far as recruiting. And back when MySpace was really, really hot, LinkedIn popped up. And some days they'd have as many as 20 people apply to their site and create a profile. And then in 2005, we had YouTube. And that was an excellent way for people to, to upload content and talk about their skill sets and share the information and the knowledge that they had. And then 2006, and I don't know, that doesn't seem like that long ago to me, but that's when the smartphone came on the scene. And now today, 90% of job candidates are using their smartphone in their career search. So it's amazing how, how things have moved forward. So what's the problem, right? 100 years of doing things, we've got it down pat. Do we need to change any of this? How many of you have ever, or will admit to, having a bad hire? Yeah. Touch into that pain. Think about how that felt. Think, think about how you felt when that person left. I mean, you, you've got managers where you're sourcing for them, you're, you're looking to find the perfect candidate, you finally bring somebody forward, they take that 30-second review of the resume and say, eh, they don't have a computer science degree. I don't want to talk to them. You know that they're perfect for the role. Or they get past that step and come into the interview process and get asked that odd question and somebody doesn't like the way they answered it and they're out. Or worse, you get to the hiring stage and you know who the manager's picking is not the right fit for the organization. And you consult and you counsel and they still want to move forward with that individual. And six months later, that person's left a wake of bodies, the team is, is morale is down, they're behind on their delivery, and you have to start the process all over again. It's awful going through a bad hire. And we know that the traditional interview process doesn't address truly what we need to know in order to ensure that we're bringing on the right people. And yet, we keep doing it. So what can we do about this? And this is where I want to challenge you to experiment. Run an experiment. Think about all that you've learned in all the sessions yesterday and today and all the new ideas. And you don't have to go back and change the world but pick somebody and run one experiment that might move the needle for you in getting closer to hiring success. Some of the trends that we hear about today that are changing things up a little bit are job auditions. Has anybody ever used a hackathon to look at talent and, and source candidates and, and bring them on board? couple of you. Yeah, that's a great way. And, and job auditions don't have to be one particular thing. You can create what that looks like just so you can see a little more about what the candidate will actually bring to the table in an actual situation of doing the job. Low pressure environments. So I started recruiting back when dinosaurs roamed the earth. There's a couple out here that know this. Um, and we would meet people for coffee or have dinner with an individual, right? We, we didn't have, we didn't have the internet, um, but we, we couldn't reach out to them, so it was casual. You got to know a candidate, just that one-on-one, -on -one. And, and people tend to open up a lot more in a low-pressure environment. 
Some of the really cool things that we see with virtual reality and augmented reality, you know, you see at career fairs the cool companies where they've got the VR glasses and people are walking around their new office checking it out, right? Um, Jaguar even created an app that you can download on iTunes that teaches you how to build an electric car and talks about the process with that. And within that, they have coding puzzles. And so they're using those coding puzzles to see who's solving the problems more effectively. And I can guarantee you that those are going, I think my mic went root, sorry. Um, those are going to their sourcers as the first candidates that they need to call. And then we've got video interviews. So we've done video conferences for years and years, but now there are that you can utilize, like HireVue, um, a lot of other tools where you can create a video of yourself and then send that to a candidate. Or you can do Skype meetings. There, there's lots of different ways. So be thinking about some of these trends and how you might implement those in your process to get a more effective um, interview. So I'm looking at these pictures and I'm, I'm trying to bring pictures of what an interview process might look like. And I ran across this one of, the, of these two women that I've X'd out. But I want you to look at that. You know, that's from the, the era of Mad Men. And yet, time and time again, I'll be walking by a conference room and seeing, you know, just that process right there. But I challenge you to do more creative interviews where you've got paired programming or presentations, or again, the, the casual environment where people are more relaxed and will engage with you. You know, Jerome was talking earlier today about the C-level suite and how hiring is in the top three of, of their focus. And I listen to, to our, our leaders talk and about what they're doing, and I see these quotes from people like, you know, Steve Jobs talking about going to exceptional lengths to hire the best people in the world. And then Mark Benioff, who says hiring was and still is the most important thing that they do. Can you imagine working for somebody like that? Having that type of individual behind you where you can experiment and create and go to exceptional lengths to hire the best people. I can imagine that, but that's not who I work with. Meet Adam. Adam's who I work with. Adam's one of our hiring managers, and while his, his quote is certainly not as inspirational as the others, what I love about Adam was he was willing to run the experiment with me. He was open to try something new because we weren't finding the talent that we needed to fill his role, and he was in pain. And so what we do at Oppenheimer Friends is something called a go-see. So if we hear about a company doing something very innovative or leading edge, we will send a group of individuals out to that organization to learn a little bit more. And one organization we visited was called Menlo Innovations out in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And the founder of Menlo wrote a book called Joy Inc. And in the book, he had talked about their recruiting process and how they brought in this huge group of people and they paired them up with each other and they did this all day interview process and they hired this fantastic team. And it sounded really interesting, but it was nothing that we in a very conservative, highly regulated environment could do. So what Adam and I talked about is how can we run this experiment? Try something on our own, something that's similar to what they did that might give us similar results. And so we sat down and, and talked about what are the core skill sets that he needs. Just give me three in order for somebody to be successful in this role. And so we went as the recruiting team and started sourcing for those three core skill sets. And then Adam and the team sat down and using our hiring tab and smart recruiters came up with what we were going to assess on. Have any of you used that cool tool where you can put your, your key assessment questions into the tool? Well, we used that to understand what it was that they were going to be assessing in the interview process. And then Adam's team created three different case studies, real live work that they do on their team that these interviewees were going to do.
And then the day came around and we had eight people show up that met these core skill sets. And mind you, nobody on Adam's team, including Adam, had seen a resume. We just had to trust their recruiting team that we knew what we were doing. And we took those eight people and we marched them into a conference room. And the first thing we did was have them do an icebreaker. They built a spaghetti tower together. And guess what? Even in that simple exercise, we were able to identify an individual that wouldn't move forward. You know why? He grabbed the spaghetti out of his partner's hand because he was frustrated. It was really fascinating. And then we started the case studies. So Adam and his team stood up and talked about the background for the case study and what they were trying to, to accomplish and learn and answered some questions. There was a little give and take. And then we switched the partners and had them work together. And one of the criteria was they had to ensure that their partner made it to the next round of interviews in order to be successful in their interview. And so we went through this. And it was about a three-hour period and went through three different case studies, switching the partners each time. At the end, the candidates left, and we sat down, and the team closed their eyes, and we did a quick thumbs up, thumbs down. We let them do sideways. There were some they couldn't make up their mind on. But anybody that was 100% thumbs up moved to the second round of interviews. Anybody that was thumbs down, automatically rejected. Talked about those that were midway and got to that consensus. The next day, we brought in the finalists. They stayed for three hours one-on-one, -on -one, pairing with each other. And they got to see them in the actual team environment. They got to meet some, of the, some more of the team. And by the end of the week, we had made our decision. So from the time we began sourcing to the time we made the offer was a two-week period for a niche skill set. And guess what? The individuals hired into that role are super, super successful and the team would not have hired them if they had seen their resume. So going into this, there were some fears. There were a lot of fears that they weren't going to get a quality candidate. Like, who's going to do this type of interview process? But they learned some things. They were surprised at, at what they learned as they went into. And they, they understood who would be a fit and who wouldn't be. And they gained insights into the candidates that they would never have gained in a traditional interview process. And from that, it began to grow organically. Other managers said, hey, I want to try that thing that Adam tried. Other managers were like, I only want to do this going forward. So creating this process and experimenting and trying really got us to a spot where we were effective at hiring. We threw out the assessments. We threw out the resumes for the hiring managers. We threw out the traditional interview process. And yet we were super successful in bringing on board the right people. So I have time for Q&A. Oh, oh, good. I was going to say my timer was off, so I didn't know how much time. But it looks like we've got about four minutes. Um, if anybody has questions. Oh, great question. Yeah. We're looking for so, candidate feedback on the process, yeah? Yes, great. Sorry, I jumped right in there. I knew you were going to repeat. Um, the feedback was fantastic. So what we did was that day after we did the thumbs up, thumbs down, we sent an email to all the candidates, and it was one email. And we said, you know, thanks so much for participating. We really enjoyed getting to know you. Um, we have decided to move forward with, you know, X, Y, and Z. Wish you the best of luck. Please don't hesitate to apply to, to something again in the near future. We had several candidates that were rejected send us a thank you email. So it, it was very positive. Any other questions? No? Hearing none? Great. So I'm going to leave you with this. It's time to run the experiment. So think about What's your experiment? What are you going to run when you get back to the office? What have you learned? What do you want to implement? What's your experiment? Thank you, Diana. Thank you. Thank you.